I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about React Native. There's some uh, some good, some bad. Uh, we use it at Huddle Up. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not necessarily a fanboy, but I'm going to give you guys the straight you know the straight skinny on what's actually happening uh, when we try to make a real app with it. So, what is React Native? Uh, it was developed by Facebook. You can take basically the same coding structures and the same types of, uh, of things that you do to write uh, web code in React, and you can make a mobile app with it. Um, it's based on React.js. You write in JavaScript. Uh, usually it's in ES6, which is kind of some of the newer, fancier stuff. Um, you get things like uh, generators and decorators and uh, spread operators and stuff like that that you haven't had before. That then gets transpiled down to ES5. Uh, bundled into a little JavaScript bundle inside your app, but the actual components in your app are native components. So when I have a scroll view or a list view, and I, you know, I have a list of things on, that's a native component. When I have a button, that's a native, native component. It feels and looks like a native component. It's just kind of being puppeted by the JavaScript. Um, one of the cool things about React Native is because the core business logic of your app is this little JavaScript bundle, you can use a tool like Microsoft's Code Push or other tools where you can swap that out on the fly. So that means that, okay, my app is in the App Store right now, and I realize that I misspelled something in my app. Minor typo, I need to fix it. Uh, old way is I have to rebuild the app, resubmit to the App Store, it has to get re-okayed, and it's up within like 48 hours. New way, I change the JavaScript, I push it through code push, and the next time every single user of mine goes to open my app, it pulls down the new JavaScript and fixes it for me automatically. And I can do that within two minutes. Um, it's a really, really handy thing to have. Um, and it's really, really cool because you can do things like split testing or like A-B testing. So I can push one JavaScript bundle to half my users and one JavaScript bundle to the other half of my users and see do they like the submit button to be red or green or you know all the things that you do with split testing that you can do on the web so easily, we can now do in real native apps just as easily. Um, you write, you write uh, React Native in JavaScript JSX just like you do React. It looks very similar, um, but there are some key differences. Uh, the key thing is it boils down to real native components. Um, you know, I can't stress that enough. This is not PhoneGap or Cordova or HTML5. It's not just a website in a box. It's a real, actual native app. And the only thing is that the backbone of that app, the core business logic, is this JavaScript bundle. Um, so sometimes it's just as fast as a native app. Like, really, there's absolutely no difference. But JavaScript is famously single-threaded. And if you're not careful, you can shoot yourself in the foot. So if you say, render this real native component, then calculate pi to a billion digits, then render this real native component, your app's going to be slow and janky. Uh, the, in, in, there are subsets and, and versions of that problem that you can go through where uh, you are going to have a bad time if you're not mindful of the fact that you do have this single thread for your business logic. However, we're going to go a little bit later on and see some ways around you know, to be able to handle that. So three things you should know. Number one, you can't use the same code for React Native and React JS. So if you already have a whole web app done in React JS, it's not a simple control C, control V, bam, it's on the mobile. There are some structural differences. That div tag I was talking about, for reasons that are kind of beyond the scope, uh, in React Native, it's called a view. And so just the nomenclature and the actual tag itself is different. Uh, the CSS styling is similar, but a little different. Um, but you can share a decent amount. You actually, really, to be honest, you can't share one-to-one -one between Android and iOS on React Native. Um, that's not a React Native limitation. That's due to the fact that like, on Android, you have a physical hardware back button, and on iOS, you don't. And so your iOS layout is probably going to want to have that back button in the upper left-hand corner like iOS people expect, and your Android layout is probably going to want to use the hardware back button, button like Android people expect, and you as a developer have to do that. Uh, React Native doesn't give that to you for free. Um, and so Rea React Native does have a number of really cool ways. You can make a component, and in your file structure, if you call it .ios.js uh, or .android.js, 
it will automatically include the correct files when it builds your thing. So you know you have one set of files for iOS, one set of files for Android. Some of the components they can share, some of the components they don't. We're getting about 60%-ish overlap of code that is 100%, you know, line for line, exactly the same uh, between iOS and Android. But the changes are usually a little bit minor, you know, to do things specifically that are different between iOS and Android. And Android. Uh, the benefit that we're seeing, however is that our developers, uh, we have people who come to us as JavaScript experts and haven't really done a lot of mobile stuff in the past, and they can work on our team and they're, they're functional from day one. And they can build out just as good a, a native app as a, as a native developer. So it's, a, it's, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, before, I, you know, before this started, I was saying that, um, uh, I think that we're at parity in terms of the cost benefit trade-off. Like there are some blockers and there are some benefits and right now uh, it's, it's a pretty even bet and as React Native improves, it's only going to get better. Um, the second thing you should know, you can't mix and, or you can mix and match React Native and Native Components. So if you already have a native app and you wanna build out a new screen you can actually do that in React Native and throw it in. Facebook actually does that all the time, uh, and they're starting to kind of filter in new functionality into their app via React Native, but keep some things actually native. On the flip side, if you have a screen and you want only one component of it to be React Native, or if you have a React Native app, but you really, really need to do that calculate pi to the billionth digit thing because it's just part of your app, you can split that off into a native component, include it into your app, and that then works. Um, so it's pretty extensible. And so if you do have either a bunch of native developers who already know how to use those tools, or you have a pre-existing native app, or you're just gonna wanna dip your toe in the React Native water and maybe try one screen, one, you know, you have a, a login page that, hey, we can try that on React Native. It doesn't, you know, it's a small part of our app and we can see if that works. You can totally do that. Uh, and it should look and feel seamless. Your end users won't know that you're actually using React Native for this part and not that part, which is pretty cool. Third, React Native is kind of growing. Uh, people talk a lot about Android and a lot about iOS, but there are projects up on GitHub right now so that you can use the exact same React Native for Windows and OS X and ties in Ubuntu, uh, Xbox, et cetera, and there's actually a project called React Native Web which is this inception where you can use your React Native code on the web instead of React. Um, and so, uh, and there are some good reasons why they do it. React Native has some really cool innovative touch handling. And so if you're gonna make a web app that's really touch intensive, maybe doing it in React Native web might benefit you and for free you kind of get this much, much better integration and compatibility with your React Native mobile code or Apple TV or iWatch or whatever pro platform you're using React Native for, if you go through React Native Web, you'll see much, much better alignment between line-for-line -line compatibility with what you're trying to do on this platform and what you're trying to do on the web. So it's a cool resource to have. Um, it's, it's something that's good to know about. And when you start to add up all of these platforms and you get someone who's really trained up or you put in the effort yourself to go and learn React Native and then all of a sudden you can write not just these look-alike apps that are websites in a box, but real, true, native apps for all of these platforms, plus iOS, plus Android, plus whatever else is coming to the sun. Um, you know, a good example, and, and it's fast and it's uh, extensible. Uh, a good example of how quickly the community adapts is, uh, this is one of the new laptops with the touch bar, um, the brand new MacBooks. And I was screwing around with React Native for OS 10, and within a couple of days, they had a package for controlling the touch bar through React Native. Um, and so I can just write my little React Native app and put stuff up on this little, little you know, screen that got rid of my escape key for no reason. Uh, uh, and sapped my battery life. It's, yeah. Um, you know, but it's fast. It's uh, both in terms of it feels like a native app and in terms of the community reacts to these types of things, uh, these new SDKs that come out, wraps them and gives them, you know, gives them to you as a developer sometimes within days, um, which is pretty cool. So the summary that we've got, 
um, you can't use the same code for everything. In fact, you can't even use the same code for iOS and Android most of the time. Usually that's the fault of the actual platforms themselves rather than React Native itself. Um, but you can mix and match React Native components in uh, with native components. And so if you do have a thing that's either hairy or uh, difficult or you really want to use uh, OpenGL for a gaming thing or whatever, you can totally do that within a React Native app. And you could just use the, the router if you want to route between native pages if that's a thing that you want to do. Or the other way around, use a native router and do all of your pages in React. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, and then coming soon is this whole host of other platforms that you get for free uh, for your technical investment in React Native as a platform, uh, which I think is really cool and exciting. So that's it. Uh, please reach out, and I want to open this up to questions because uh, I'll give you guys a, an honest answer about why we chose it and, and how we're doing with it. Yeah. No, the core components should stay pretty much the same. And so if you are doing a, a pretty simple app, there are apps that you could write that would be 100% code compatible between iOS, Android, Windows, OS 10, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Usually they're very simple apps. You see a lot of these like uh, to-do list apps that are demoed for React and React Native a lot. You can write one of those so that you wouldn't have to change a single line of code between any of these platforms. The problem is that the more complex behaviors that you want to get into and the more native you want to make it feel, Windows is inherently a different platform than Mac. And Windows users expect their apps to behave a different way than Mac users do, just like Android users expect their apps to behave a different way than iOS users do. An Android user expects to have a lot of their screens in this stack where when you hit the back button, you're descending the stack and popping off screens to go back and forth. iOS users expect to kind of go like one level deep and then kind of come back to a main thing and then go one level deep and come back to a main thing. They, you usually don't see iOS apps where you can get like five screens deep into an app and then go back, 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 back. It's just not a design pattern that is usually used. And that has nothing to do with React Native and everything to do with uh, material design versus Apple's design guidelines versus what people expect for their, their mobile devices. Um, and so that's not going away. React Native doesn't help you there because nothing, nothing helps you there. They're just different platforms. Um, but yeah, to, to answer your question, yes, the, the, the code, even for React Native web, you, you use the, the view rather than the div and stuff like that. And so yeah, it's compatible. Yeah. Uh, in terms of breaking changes, or in terms of, so they push a new, uh, they just, so Facebook just announced that they're going to be pushing a new version every month. They were doing it every two weeks. So now they're on a monthly build schedule. Uh, they have really good release notes to tell you when they uh, release a breaking change, and a lot of times how to address that change. And so most of the breaking changes that they've released in the last few weeks have been minor things. Um, uh, one example is that, uh, uh, has everyone seen a React app up close? Like you, you kind of know what it looks like with JSX and stuff. Let me see. Um, this is stupid software, yeah, escape button. Um, uh, yeah, I should, uh, where are we? All right, so this is a demo app that, that I just downloaded earlier today. Um, can everyone see that, or is it too washed out or, or crappy? It's too small. Too small. That's yeah. It's fine. Um. <laughs> That's all right. Is that any better? Yes, it is. Let me just maximize this now. There we go. All right. Uh, the things that to note is this is JavaScript, but this does not look like JavaScript, does it? This looks like uh, HTML, and this is what's called JSX. Uh, JSX is this kind of XML type pattern for JavaScript. This kind of gets not compiled down, but transpiled down 
to a JavaScript function. Uh, but to you and to me and to us that's working in it, you can kind of mentally treat it just like HTML. You need an open tag, you need a closed tag, you put stuff in there, the open tag text, there's your styles in there. That style looks a little bit like CSS. Um, I didn't look at this one, but you know, somewhere in some of these things, you've got a, a, a styling thing where um, uh, it looks exactly like a CSS style sheet. Um, so, um, sorry, I kind of spaced. What was the question again? I got into what is it stable? Um, how the hell did I end up here? <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> I just keep keep wandering. All right. Um, uh, so when, uh, that's an example of a breaking change. Um, sorry, uh, it's been a long day. Um, so a breaking change is that in, um, in Android, you had to write your CSS in a certain way. You always had to have a flex box, you had a flex of one to do certain things with certain components. Uh, that was due to a bug in Android. They fixed the bug. You can go and take out all those flex ones now because now they do bad things to your code. But they tell you very explicitly that this is what's wrong, and this is how you fix it. And most of the time, when we've been going up a version, if you go one version at a time, it's usually like an hour ordeal to go and, and jump the version and then go back into your code and fix the few things that break. Yeah? Uh, so in your case, you have to do some sort of version to Yeah. So we're still treating it like a traditional app because that's the safe way that we we want to make sure that we are backward compatible. Um, in theory, so the way that code push and these things work is when you close the app and it's actually closed by your device for a while. The next time you open the app is when it goes to the server and says, hey, is there a new JavaScript bundle? Uh, let me download it. But if you have one of those super users who is just using it all the time and never lets the app close, you can still have some of these mismatches. Um, and it's just, it's, it's good practice to make things backward compatible anyway. Um, and so we do, we do that. But no, you're right, that, that, that is one thing. Um, the other thing is that, um, well, if you have no connectivity, then you're not getting the code push either. But if you have limited connectivity, you can get some, I think there's some stuff in there that it tries to get the bundle a couple of times, and then if it doesn't see the server, it's like, screw it, I'll just use the old one. Um, and then you kind of get connectivity back, and it goes to your API, and it can't find the right thing because you've moved on, and so we don't want to deal with any of that. Um, Um, so we have almost all of it in native right now, and we're kind of going the other way in that we may pull part of a list view back to native native code uh, instead of React Native. The reason is because we're getting some performance problems when we load a ton of stuff. So we're a messaging app, and if you're in a thread where people are just trading cat gifs all day long, and you have like a bunch of them, even if you're even if you're chunking it and you're only loading like you know 25 or 50 at a time and stuff like that, you can see like instead of being zippy and snappy and you hit it and it just it kind of jitters just a little bit and we don't like that. Um, and so we may pull that back to a native component until such time as we can figure out a better way of of staging everything so that the animation transition happens smoothly and then it starts to load the assets or. We do some magic behind the scenes, and and everything works a little bit more uh, fluid. You know, it's, it's a little bit smoother. So, anyone? Yeah, anyone else? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, we use uh, Redux, um, and specifically, we're using Redux sagas. Um, we've been looking at MobX because I think it looks cool, but I don't want to go and chase the, the new shiny thing. But um, that's actually one of the real benefits of React Native is that if you've already got your state set up in your web app and you've got Redux, you've got your, all your actions and all your reducers and all your sagas and everything is completely and totally like cool, you can bring that over wholesale to your native app. Like you don't have to change anything, which is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.